Loving God, we look for you in the wrong places. We put our trust in material things. We worry about things that we cannot change, and we wonder if you are even there at all. For all the times we have doubted you, Lord, forgive us. For all the ways we have neglected your word and ignored your people, forgive us. Do not be far from us, Lord. There is no one else we can turn to for help. Renew our fickle hearts and help us put our trust in you. There is no wrong that God cannot make right. There is no chasm that can separate us from God's love. The Lord is patient and kind, generous and good. God will not forsake you or leave you. Turn to the Lord with confidence and put your faith in God's great mercy. By the power of Jesus Christ, we are made whole. Amen. This morning's scriptures comes from Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 and 11, as well as Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. The seventh day is a Sabbath to your Lord, your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in the six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and consecrated it. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, or your male or female slave, or your ox or your donkey, or any of your livestock, or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slaves may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath. Friends, I would like to invite you to participate with me in an amazing offer. It is an opportunity that God has provided us, and it is called to rest. It's part of Sabbath. And it is an amazing, unclaimed treasure by the people of God. It is an inheritance that we have provided for us since the foundations of the world, built in to the very DNA of creation, you and I could be wealthy and rich and rested if only we took advantage of that which God has provided. Can I get an amen? Amen! <laughs> Some of you are like, I didn't know it was going to be that kind of a week at church. <laughs> well, it is. Sisters and brothers, you and I are made for a certain rhythm of life. You and I are built for a certain routine and a cadence and a pace at which we operate at divine beauty. And when we don't live by that rhythm, when we participate in a different calendar, when we get caught up in the call of consumerism and the rush of consuming perpetually, we are exhausted, we are fatigued, we get a little cynical, we get a little ornery, we might get a little cranky, thank you Susan, we might get a little jaded, <laughs> she, she fed me that line, I'm not calling Susan cranky, she fed that to me, she's helping me preach. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we have an unopened gift. In every day of the week, we are gifted, literally graced by God's presence. And six of those days, it looks a very specific way. We know that routine. But that seventh day, the gift is a little different. And the gift is that that one day gets to look a little different than the other days. It is an unopened grace that God has provided for us. 
So I'm going to appeal to you today on three levels. For some of you, I want to take you up to the heavens. I want to appeal to your spirit. For some of you, I want to appeal to your mind. I want to try and convince you that this is actually a better way to live. And to others of you, I'm going to appeal to your very carnitas, your carnal, your embodied, incarnational, embodied, enacted desire, of, a.k.a. you're tired this morning. <laughs> <coughs> that was a fancy way of saying you're, you're pooped. So here are my three appeals. If you believe that there is a God, and that that God has set the world in a certain motion, that that God has a good desire for that God's creation, and that that God who loves the world so much, we hear in John 3.16, so much that God gave God's best to us that we might be saved from ourselves and the system that we're caught up in. If that God says six days work, one day different, it is actually our design or our created nature that we honor God by saying this one day is different than the other days. We actually give glory to God. I know some of you, I'm going to make you really nervous right now. By turning off your phones. By having one day that you don't check email. By one day that you don't spend any money or charge anything online. By one day that you don't turn on the TV until after you've read something that nourishes your soul. That there's one day where you call friends you haven't seen in a while. That you make time for what matters. You glorify God and you also, and this is for some of you, this is really going to stoke your, your, your political side. It is a prophetic no to the demands of the world that you be productive every day. It says no, there is a better way to live and a higher order of creation and I will not get run into the ground. I will not get stuck in this rut and I will not burn out or rust out. There's a better way and it's an ancient way. It's a prophetic critique of the system we are caught up in. It's a spiritual rebellion. Some of you are like, wait a minute, not checking my email is spiritual? It can be. It can be. So here's the second layer. For some of you, you're like, oh yeah, spirit, spirit, I get that. But, you know, I'm not really into the frou-frou stuff. So let me make a different appeal. You work better when you don't work every day. You're better. You're more pleasant to be around. You're more productive. You're more creative. You are better. You bring more to the world when you have a little bit in reserve. When your margins are so thin. When you're not running on fumes. Should I keep going? <laughs> you're better when you don't work every day. You just work better. So in a very, some of you I'm appealing to your utility, right? Just as a utilitarian, it is a better way to live when one day is different than the other days. Because when your tank fills up a little bit, when you have some room to breathe, some time to process, some distance from the hustle and bustle of life, there's actually a work where your spirit, your heart, and your mind are in conversation, and you process some stuff, your reserves fill up, your body is restored. It's just a better way to live. So that's my second pitch. Here's where the rubber meets the road, just at the lowest level. I don't know if you've noticed, but our culture and 
our society and in our world is in a little bit of a crisis. You can call it an identity crisis, you can call it a culture war, you can call it whatever it is. So I appeal to you, sisters and brothers, we're going to need you to rest up a little bit because we got a fight coming. There are people who are worn down and worn out who can't even fight for themselves or may not have a voice, and we're going to need you to fight on their behalf and to speak up for those who are marginalized and disadvantaged. So I need you to rest up now for the days that are coming. I don't know if you've noticed, but the system, the machine, can roll over any protest and any critique. It just sucks it up into the big vacuum and incorporates it for fuel, and it rolls on. So take a rest. You know what, the battle will be here Monday. Make Sunday a little different. Rest your weary souls. Because we got a long journey ahead. If the arc of history is long but it bends towards justice, you can take a day to rest. Be still, my soul. The psalmist says. Be still, my soul. And know that you are not God. That's a modern translation. <laughs> Be still and know there is a God. That's a modern translation. Be still and know that I am God, is the ancient. Look, you're not in this alone. You've got us. If nothing else, you've got us. And we believe that there is a power in the universe that empowers us all. So you don't have to be on guard every day. You can take a day off and say this one day is going to be different than my other days. We're going to need you in the days ahead. So rest up. It's okay. We'll stand guard. You can sleep. We'll stand guard. We're here to carry each other's burdens. You're not in this alone. Because when you're under the impression that this, the burden falls to you alone, that's a recipe for fatigue and exhaustion. Even some bitterness might set in. Feeling put upon, agitated. So it's okay. We have an unopened gift. And it's called Sabbath. It's a grace that God has given us that things are going to be okay. You can take one day and rest. Be still, my soul. The Lord is on thy side. Wait patiently with all the grief and pain. Still my soul. Rest in the Lord and the power of God's might. You're not alone. And you can give a big prophetic no to the all-consuming demand to be productive every day. It's an offer and an invitation. And in the second half of our gathering, I would love to talk about how that might look for us. I'd like to show you a video. It's from the Psalms. It's Psalm 130. Just rest in this as the words of the ancients pour over us. <laughs>